millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Do you want to know the secret to building wealth? Okay, here it is. The secret is being smart with your money and leveraging it well. That's it. It's not always about making more money every day, but it's about using what you've got in the most effective way day in and day out. And today's guest is going to help you do just that by dishing some secrets to save money where you shop every day so you can use that cash to fund all the other stuff that you want to do in life. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too, and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. How we pay for things is changing, in case you didn't get the memo. And I haven't yet jumped on the mobile pay bandwagon yet, but I don't think it's going to be long before we're paying for almost everything through mobile pay. And honestly, I still don't know exactly how I feel about that. What do you think? Well, of course, regardless of how I feel, the train is coming. And not just for mobile pay, I think all the normal ways we pay for things are getting a really good shakedown. We're saying no to traditional banks, cable is going away, how we buy cars is different, how we shop, of course. It's an exciting time to be a part of it, to just see this evolution. So I wanted to chat with Jay from Raise, this cool company where you can buy and sell gift cards and earn cash back, to get his thoughts on ways we can save money on the stuff we buy every day, so then we can use that cash to go buy other stuff. So before we get started, I have to ask, I know you're in Chicago, and uh, I grew up in Indiana, so I need to know if you can squash the debate, who has the best deep dish in town i think you know there's a place in lincoln park there may be one other location called pequots and it's deep dish and they use you know cast iron pans so that you get this really nice caramelized crust and the the sauce is a little bit spicy so 
uh, that's far and away my favorite. Oh, nice. I've not heard of that one. So you're, you're adding a, a new one to my list. <laughs> absolutely. Try it out next time you're in town. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I wanted to talk about some some information I found in an article recently that said by 2020, it's estimated the value of mo- mobile payments will reach somewhere around $14 trillion, which just shows that mobile payments are definitely a trend. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like, What is driving the mobile payment market? Is it consumers or is it customers? Like, where's this demand coming from? Yeah, I actually think it is primarily driven by consumers as there is you know, a desire to take less with you on the road. And as yeah. you know, I always look back 15 years ago where all of the things you could do with your mobile phone required like 20 different devices. And, you know, as it's now <laughs> converged, I don't carry a camera anywhere anymore. I like to not carry my wallet. I can have my calculator right there on my phone. So I think it's this convergence towards convenience uh, driven by consumers um, that said, I do think retailers and uh, the banks themselves are driving, uh, you know, sort of an acceleration of that trend because they see the demand going there. So they're trying to build products and services that that cater to that. You know, I, I, I made a, a quote to, gosh, a few months ago that I said, you know, if five years from now, we think people are going to take wallets as their default to pay. We're, we're just crazy. Right. The, the right. technology is coming. The consumer desire is coming. And technology, especially on phones, is evolving. And so I just think that we're, we're headed towards a way, you know, a world in which people you know, just leave their house with their phone and that's it. Is there a specific advantage for companies or credit card companies to have mobile payments? Like, is there a monetary advantage for them or is this just a purely convenience play? Uh, you know, as any time companies build new products, they're always trying to make money off of it. So <laughs> there, there certainly there certainly is, you know, in certain cases, a monetary advantage, whether that be, you know, Apple taking a few basis points of every transaction of Apple Pay or or the, the banks and, and retailers themselves having actually more actionable data when it's tied to a mobile phone, which has a user attached to it. Um, you know, they're looking to monetize it one way or another. But the reality is they're building this because of consumer demand. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think as much as we love the idea of mobile payments, there's still a little bit of um, concern, I guess, over mobile payments. So in your opinion, like, what do we need to know about mobile payments to use them effectively, safely, et cetera? Yeah, well, in, in many ways, actually, mobile payments are going to be more secure than traditional credit cards. And you know, let's mm-hmm. use Apple Pay as an example. They're effectively, with, without getting into the technical details, they're effectively generating a unique code every time it gets used at a retailer. So you have no chance of getting your credit card swiped by a reader. You have no chance of, the, you know, heaven forbid, somebody just copies your number when they take the card. So they're actually, in many ways, more secure. I think the, the, bigger, the, the bigger obstacle right now for consumers is just ubiquity. Can I use it everywhere? You know, one store takes Apple Pay and the next store doesn't. Um, right. I start to get nervous and, and I, you know, I can't leave home without my wallet. So I actually think that's that's the bigger the, the, the bigger drawback. And I think for merchants themselves, it's expensive, right? To upgrade this hardware every few years to support the newer technology is expensive. So that's going to be the, the, the biggest, I, I think, the biggest, I guess, headwind in, in getting ubiquity of mobile payments. Yeah. How far do you think we are away from this being, you know, almost like 100% the norm? Are we a few years or five years or... I'm I'm generally more bullish, and I say it's it's kind of five years. I mean, you're always going to have your holdouts that you know, still accept sure. cash and still have the, the the swipe and chip and pin, et cetera. But but for me, I, I see a world just the just the trend, even just walking around your local neighborhood and realizing you know the, the little convenience store, independent convenience store in the corner now takes mobile payments. I think <laughs> you're going to see an acceleration of that, and retailers realizing that there are consumers out there that are just carrying their phones. Um, and, and they need a way to capture those customers. Because if I walk by a store that says cash only, I'm, I'm not walking in. So right. I think you'll, you'll see that trend accelerate very, very quickly. Yeah, it's really sad to admit that I hardly ever have cash on me. And then when, you know, if I'm in like a parking garage and they only take cash, I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, next time you're not going back to that garage. And so that yeah. garage can think hard about do they accept, do they accept mobile payments or credit cards in general? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I want to jump in and talk a little bit about Raise. I've been a fan since I heard about you guys a couple years ago and you're on the podcast. And I think the idea that you can buy and sell gift cards is like such a great money move. And it's something that I don't think most people think about. And just to give an example, like last month, I, I bought a gift card on your site for a relative 
and got a great deal. And then I got thinking, well, hmm, like there's a store I wanted to buy something from. So I bought a gift card at a 10% discount, then used it to buy what I wanted. The site was having a sale. So in essence, I got, you know, this like amazing deal just by, you know, thinking a little bit outside of the box. So let's refresh uh, to to people who maybe don't know. Tell me about Raise and and how we can use it best. Yeah. um, So in in a nutshell, raise, as you just said, is is a is a way to save money on things you buy every day. And if, if I can kind of you know rewind six years, the companies had really three big chapters. The first is exactly as you described. We became a marketplace to solve a big problem, which is twenty billion dollars of gift cards go unused every year. And let's give twenty those billion dollars, twenty wow. billion, and that's in the U.S. alone. So it's a it's a much bigger problem globally. And and so we wanted to give an option to liquidate that. You know, I, I still, before I joined Raise, I had you know, a, a, a drawer full of unused gift cards for birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I, I never got around to using it. So it was a great way for me to go on and make a little bit of money off of that. And, you know, the flip side, consumers can, can go, to, you know, take my sale as a way to save money for themselves. And what that right. did, that really generated the idea of self-use. And you actually highlighted both things is people think of gift cards, you know, they're called gift cards for a reason. I give them to people. Um, but when people started to say, hey, I can save 10 or 12 or more percent off for myself, why not do that at places I shop every day? And right. so that was that was the first chapter that that bred the second chapter, which is direct retail partnerships. And you know, we work really hard to partner with 500 of the biggest retailers to actually be a platform for them to attract new customers for self-use. And you know, that, was, that was the second big chapter. We had unlimited supply from the brands that you shop at every day. And then our third chapter brings us to today. All those two, those two things still exist, but we layered on um, a product that we call Raise Pay, where at about 200 retailers now, you can type in the exact amount of money you want to spend, and it spins up a code that you can use instantly at the checkout, or, or you know, if you're on a website, use it and then put it at checkout. And that saves so much friction where, you know, if I'm taking a trip, I don't need to buy, you know, three different gift cards to fulfill a transaction. I just put in exactly how much I want to spend and, and you get cash ah. back right away. So it, it's really evolved into a payments platform that's a mobile first payments platform um, using technology around gift cards. But really, it's around paying and saving money every day. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. 
Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. Let's go back to some of our money fundamentals for a few minutes and talk about saving money since we're already in the saving money frame of mind. I've been asked if there is a right or wrong way to save money. Honestly, there isn't. There really isn't. I will say, though, if you're just shuffling money back and forth from your checking account to your savings account, you're not actually saving money. You're just moving it around. (laughs) But that happens to all of us from time to time. So it's really no big deal if that is your current situation. But here are a few steps to help you save money, hopefully a little bit better. So Number one tip is to figure out what your base number is. So this is how much money you need every month to fund the stuff that you have to pay on average. So it's great to know your base number because then theoretically, anything over your base number is money that you can save or that you can put towards other things you want to do, which leads us into number two, which is get some goals, and then figure out how much you need to save each week or each month to fund those goals. So it's not good enough to just say you want to take a trip to Hawaii or you want to buy a new house or you want to pay off your student loans. You need to actually figure out how much that goal is going to cost you so then you can break it down into little digestible chunks, whether it's saving each day or saving each week or saving each month. You've got to know this so then you can actually achieve these goals. So once we've got our goals, then we need to set up a high-yield savings account. And there are so many to choose from. I'm a big fan of Ally Bank Savings and Marcus from Goldman Sachs. But basically what you're just trying to do is to earn more interest than you're earning from your bank savings account. And if you just have a bank savings account, I want you to figure out what interest rate they're actually paying you. Likely it's something pretty small, like 0.02% or maybe 0.03 or 0.04% if you're super lucky. But the high yield savings accounts, they're paying interest above 2%. So it may not be a huge amount of money that you're earning over your bank savings account. But look, in my opinion, any money is extra money. If someone dropped a $20 bill in front of you and you couldn't find who it belonged to, I hope you would pick up the $20, right? Maybe you pass it on to someone else, but the point is, is extra money is extra money and all of that money counts. So let's say that we figured out our goals and we need to save $250 a month. Great. If we get paid twice a week, we just auto debit $125 and then $125 the next paycheck. So you don't even have to think about it. Auto debit is one of the best features. It just automatically shows up in your savings account and What it does for your brain is for you to think, well, I didn't even have that money to begin with, but I have it over in my savings account. So now I'm like this superstar at savings. And you can set up as many savings accounts as you want. And one of my tricks is to give them names. So this is my account for saving for travel. This is my account for taxes. This is my account for new house. So when I look at all of those balances, I feel really good because I feel like I'm actually making progress. And then look through your spending and see if there are ways that you can leverage your money better. Can you use a credit card to pay for trips and get cash back, get rewards, all sorts of good stuff that you can actually turn into cash? Can you use apps to buy stuff at a lower price? 
you don't have to be nutty with all of this, but I promise you that a little, a little effort, it really goes a long way. So what I want you to start thinking about is savings from lots of different perspectives. Not only how do you save the money that you've got better, but is there a way for the money that you're using on everyday purchases that perhaps you can just pay for it in a smarter way? Maybe you can save some money. There are a million different ways to think about this, but just having an awareness of savings is really going to help you smash all of those goals that you have. It's fascinating. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, I'm curious, a little bit more about raise pay. So when you say we can like earn money back on every purchase, like how does that, how does that functionality operate? Yeah, so it's really straightforward. I, I always use Chipotle as an example because I eat there way too often, given they're right <laughs> across the street from my office. But you know, I'm I'm at I'm at checkout at Chipotle, and maybe I bought food for two other people, and I want to spend eighteen dollars and thirty six cents. So instead of going in and buying a twenty five dollar Chipotle card and and you know using a portion of it today oh. and a portion of it tomorrow, I just simply type in eighteen dollars and whatever cents. It spins up within seconds a barcode that they just scan, and you walk out. And in that transaction, I save, you know, maybe a dollar or two for, for my next purchase, either at Chipotle or, or any other brand on the platform. Interesting, right? So, yeah, because we, we've we thought about the whole gift card market, if you will, as these denominations, 10, 25, 50, 100. And there's always those like weird amounts left over that you either don't spend or, you know, you're trying to figure out how to piecemeal like three yeah. or four cards together. So that's really inventive. Interesting. Are there any other like unique ways that people are using raise pay? I, I look, I think the biggest is saving money at places they shop every day. We do see, see the interesting things pop up where, you know, I, I recently moved and had to buy, a, a, you know, a ridiculous amount of boxes from Home Depot. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I, I bundled those transactions together. It's not a, it's not a retailer I frequent regularly, but I was able to go and buy all those boxes, you know, type in exactly what I needed, and I saved money for my next purchase. Really straightforward. Or we see people who are, you know, going on maybe a once every couple of year big vacation, and they're looking for a way to save extra money, and they come on and maybe get a hotel or even a cruise. And the way they think about it is, you know, I'm able to afford an extra night on vacation with my family because I use rates. And that's that's really the, the cool power of what we do. You know, our original slogan was you "Give yourself a raise." It's really about expend, you know, extending your purchasing power either on things you do every day or those, you know, infrequent purchases that, that will, you know, let you get an extra night on your trip or, you know, maybe buy an extra outfit for back to school. Yeah. I mean, when you start talking about like an extra night on a trip, I mean, we, we don't typically think of using, you know, gift cards or different things in that, in that way. But when you can earn something like that, like that's a significant amount of money. Yeah. I'd I love to every day. I'd love to know too, I don't know if this is like a, you know, secret knowledge or, you know, industry secret, but do you keep trends on, on the cards that offer you like the best bang for your buck? I mean, obviously we, we, we do. And, and it, the way we think about it is when it's about economics for both us and our, and our retail partners. And so sure. there are, you know, you can think about it this way, the frequent everyday use case where it's the store I'm going at every day you're generally going to get a little bit less because the retailer knows you're going to walk in and we're just encouraging maybe a little bit more frequency versus things where, you know, retailers need to encourage you to trial. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if this is an embarrassing story or not, but I wanted to lose a few pounds going into summer. And so I, uh, I, I wanted to do one of these meal kits or, you know, meal plans. Yeah. And, and I didn't know which one to try, but guess what? There was one that was 30% off on our platform. And so <laughs> that's certainly the one I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that's the way I think about it. There's your frequent use case ones, and then there's the ones that, that you know retailers need to get you to to trial, and those will have your better deals. But no matter what, the way the, what I always tell my friends and family is, just use it on everything you do, and then the savings accumulate. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, even if it's a few percentage here and there, you know, cumulatively that could add up to a sizable amount of money. Yeah. I'm at. Uh, I just checked the other day. Eight hundred fifty-six dollars here today using our app. So I'm doing pretty wow. well. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's definitely a significant amount of money. And I think it's interesting because so often we just get in the habit of doing our money the same way every single day. We don't think about trying something different or that there might be something as simple as using something like a raise where we could, you know, I always say find money in your bank account 
It, it's just it's just altering the way that you pay for things. And I, I think it's really interesting if if people could somehow get that chip in their head where they could suddenly be you know excited about trying something different, and then they realize there's the savings, like how that could powerfully transform people's lives. It sounds crazy, but I, I've certainly seen it happen. Yeah, it's and, and, you know one of my biggest tasks as CEO is to take friction out of the customer experience and make it so that once you do try us, you're going to want to use this every day because it's so easy. And so that's really been all of our work. That's what Raise Pay was all about. That's what future iterations of Raise Pay are all about. Where you know people don't even think of us as a gift card platform in, in the pay in, in use case. They think of us as a super simple mobile payment solution that lets you save money on everything you do. And so that's mm, really wow. that's really what our mission is, is I want to extend your dollar and make it as easy as possible to do. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. And I'm just curious, like, where do you think, obviously, you've had three iterations now and, um, you know, not that you're going to disclose anything on this podcast, but like, where do you think the future of this goes? Is it just you, you keep coming up with these different solutions to just help people, as you say, extend their dollar? Yeah, I think I think so. I, I think, you know, if you take what I just said, which is, you know, make, make your money go farther and do it as painlessly as possible. I think everything you can see within Raise is really around, you know, basically building out this as a ubiquitous mobile payment solution. I mean, I can't even tell you how easy this is to type in amount and scan and you're out. It's even faster to use our app than it is to take out a credit card, you know, do the chip and pin, wait to maybe sign it. It's actually right. faster to use us than, than those other ones. And you can save money doing it. It just becomes a no brainer. And, you know, I want to continue to take seconds out of that flow where, you know, you instantly just pull up our app and you scan and you're out. And so that's, that's really everything we're about is, is taking, taking steps and seconds out of that process so that everybody thinks of us really as a payment method, not just as a gift card, right? Yes, gift cards yeah, are powering yeah. it because that technology is actually really powerful. And guess what? Retailers already have done the, the plumbing to make it work. Um, but if I, you know, if I can have a, 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 a mobile app that I'm confident that I can use at my favorite retailers every day and save money, that's really, that's really the sweet spot of what we're doing. And there's nothing worse than standing behind somebody in line when it's taking forever for <laughs> the card to go through. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's so funny that that's actually, you know, using the product ourselves is really the, obviously we get customer insight as well, but when the first time we were in beta with raise pay and I used it across the street at Chipotle, it took we actually did the math. It actually only took 24 seconds, um, but it felt like an eternity when I had 20 people behind me in line waiting, <laughs> waiting for me. Like, what's this guy doing with the gift card? And so we've like we've taken seconds down, and now we're actually our end-to-end -end process is actually faster than using a chip and pin credit card. So um, you know, we've got it to the point where we're, we're pretty happy, but you know, always continue to improve. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, last question, I just, you know, you've had a super successful career and done a lot of different things. But if somebody had the privilege to, to sit with you for a few minutes and pick your brain, I would love to know, what do you think is the most powerful money lesson you've learned to date, either personally or professionally that you think everybody should know about? Yeah, it's, it's funny. One of the, when I came to raise, and you know, I've, I've learned this over the course of my career, um, I, I added sort of a company value of act like an owner. And, yeah. and, and I actually, the, the biggest point of when this was instilled into my head was when I was at DoorDash, when Tony Shu, the CEO, this was his whole, this was his whole thing. Act like an owner, act as if you're making decisions. Like it's always coming out of your own bank account. <laughs> and and wow. so in business, when we do that it, and you use that lens, it, you know, it makes trade-offs of, you know, am I really going to, you know, can I, can I stay at that? you know, more affordable hotel, because if this is my money, that's what I would do. And so it really, it forces us to make decisions, both in things like travel and entertainment, but also, you know, the companies we partner with and the, the tools we use, like, if, you know, if this is your money, how would you be spending it? And so that's, that's my guideline professionally. And if you just apply that to your, your personal account, you know, I, I, I get made fun of a lot because I'm trying, I try to save money everywhere. They're like, you're a CEO, <laughs> you should be splurging. And it's really like, you know, I own my own financial future decisions I make today will impact me years from now. So, you know, act like your future owner when it comes to your personal life and would these, will these decisions benefit you in your future life? And it's a, it's a really good lens to look through. As I mentioned earlier, I have used arrays for so many different reasons over the last year, and I really wish I would have calculated all of my savings, but let's just say it's got to be a fair amount of money that I've saved on 
all sorts of things over the last year. So if you want to check out Raise, head on over to raise.com or find Raise in your app store to start saving some cash. Thanks so much for checking out this episode and a big thanks to our sponsors that make this show possible. Remember to subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you never miss an episode. But before you leave, I want to empower you to embrace where you are today, the good and the not so good. And remember, nothing lasts forever. Just keep taking small steps every day and remember how awesome you truly are.